I mean, follow me here. She wins North Carolina. She wins uh, all of the uh, Rust Belt. She's got Pennsylvania. She's got uh, Arizona and Nevada. She's at 320 electoral votes, and she needs 270 to win. Even if Georgia gets turned into chaos by the SCOTUS, that puts her at 300. She still wins. Harris leads Trump by five points in Pennsylvania poll. Now, this is fantastic news. Very good news. Uh, Vice President Harris is leading Trump in a swing state of Pennsylvania, according to the Spotlight poll. Harris is winning 49% of the poll compared to 44% uh, for Trump in the race for the Keystone State's 19 electoral votes. This is good news. Donald Trump cannot win without Pennsylvania. I've looked at the map. I've looked at all the map people. All the people with the maps and all the YouTube videos, there are lots of them. You can go there. You can look at them if you'd like, and I suggest you do because they're fun for nerds, have all made the same calculation. Donald Trump can not win without Pennsylvania. He can't. Won't happen. Doesn't matter what other math you do, he can't get the win without Pennsylvania. And Kamala's in the lead in Pennsylvania, which is great news. We would like her to stay in the lead. We would like her to win Pennsylvania. This will prevent him from winning. If Pennsylvania goes blue on election night, it's going to be a quick night. It really is. I'm going to have a beer set up on uh, election night. I'm going to have some beer. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be live streaming it with you, hopefully. Come watch it with me. And Pennsylvania's on the East Coast time zone. So if they go blue early, it's game over. It really is, which is good for me and for you and for people who uh, uh, like our country. Uh, <laughs> that's good news. So... Let's see what else is going on because there are, could, can she be stopped? I put that in the title tonight because I think that she can be stopped by one thing. And I'll talk about that here in just a sec. Hello human, it is me Kanooch. I need you to press the subscribe button. I have to feed my many AI babies. More good news. FBI stats show murder dropped 11%, the largest single year decline in the last 20 years. Apparently crime is down. You know, Donald Trump keeps telling you that the, this is the, the entire country is going to hell in a handbasket and it's a Mad Max hellscape out there, but it's just not true according to the people who keep track of these things. Crime, including serious violent incidents like murder rape, dropped nationally from 22 to 23, according to new data released by the FBI on Monday. Violent crime was down 3%. Property crime took a similar drop at 2.4%. Uh, the most serious crimes went down significantly. Murder and non-negligent manslaughter were down an estimated 11.6, the largest single-year decline in two decades, while rape decreased by an estimated 9.4. So things are getting better? Wouldn't that be nice? Don't trust Donald Trump when he tells you that it's a nightmare monster hellscape uh, Mad Max hell zone out there. Uh, property crimes burglary decreased by 7. Motor vehicle theft, however, was up by an estimated 12. Okay, more people stealing cars, apparently. Uh, record incidents of shoplifting were also up from 999,000 to 1,100,000. So same level of incidents reported in 2019 before the pandemic. Okay. Shoplifting is up slightly. Public perceptions of crime is often out of step with the facts, especially in the age of social media, ease of digital communications between neighbors and doorbell cameras, when Americans may be more aware of individual crimes than they would be, have been in the past. So it feels like there's more crime because you see it more often. You see it on the cams, you see it on the uh, ring doorbells, and your friends share it around. Uh, because of crime stats, like the one we just saw, because of Kamala's strong polling, she is probably going to carry and win Pennsylvania, Georgia, North Carolina, and all of the Rust Belt states, the Michigans, your uh, Wisconsin's and stuff like that, that puts her over the limit. That puts her over the 270. She's going to win probably pretty early. What we do have, <laughs> Daniel, you're right. Shoplifting, the worst crimes. Damn you, Sleepy Joe. Uh, you're right. Donald Trump's going to be mad about this, Daniel. He's going to be angry that the murders went down. He doesn't care. Who cares about murder? Not important. Shoplifting has gone up, and it's Sleepy Joe's fault. Uh, <laughs> I think Kamala's going to win Pennsylvania because of these numbers. We saw the numbers. She's up there. They've got. Uh, they love Josh Shapiro. He's their governor. He's. Uh, he talks a big game. He's going to push hard for her. She's going to win Pennsylvania, which means Donald Trump can't win. I mean, there's no electoral path for him that does not include Pennsylvania. There's just not enough votes. So some wacky shit is going to happen in Georgia. Georgia has actual Trump fans working inside the voting government, inside the government, within the voting structures, 
and they have just passed a law that forces them to hand count all the ballots. Now, is this a good idea? No, this is not to make things safer. This is not to make things better. This is not going to make things faster. It's only going to cause one thing, chaos. They want chaos so that Donald Trump can go on TV and complain that there's chaos and then say that he was cheated. And then Fox News gets to run a story uh, and interview local yokels who will then say, I, my vote didn't get counted properly. I don't trust none of these people. They can't even count the vote proper. And then chaos. They get to go on TV and say the system doesn't work. Don't let the Democrats win. You feel like Donald Trump won. You feel it in your bones. And that's what matters is your feelings that he won. And this chaos proves the deep state. The deep state's out to get us, folks. The deep state is out to get them. And this proves that the chaos is real and that the function is not there and that you need to go to the streets and rally for Donald Trump. That's going to happen in Georgia because they have built this dysfunction themselves. They have built this dysfunction intentionally because they want this dysfunction. I uh, want to see this go to give uh, to the guy who didn't want, who they want to win again. I don't think so. Uh, the old Gore Bush tactic. Um, I know what you're going for, Shinsento, but I don't think they can this time because the Supreme Court back in 2000 did stop the recounts in Florida and say, okay, go with what you've got. Stop counting. They counted later and found out that Al Gore actually won, but it was too late by then. If they did that in Georgia, stop the count, go with what you've got. That gives Trump Georgia, but it doesn't give him Pennsylvania. He still loses which is why I don't think they're going to do that. I think we're looking at 300 electoral votes for Kamala. They are going to dismiss his Georgia uh, lawsuits uh, because it wouldn't matter. If it, go, yeah, if it goes from, what are they, 19 or something like that? If it goes from 300 to 280 uh, or some shit like that for her, she's still the winner. She's still above 270. And hopefully, I think, the SCOTUS won't go crazy over this. I think they will say, hey, listen, even though uh, they're going to uh, tell it to stop, they're going to say, okay, well, you can do this, but she still won. We move forward. You can do the, the case and find out who won Georgia, but he still doesn't win. Why are we talking about the chaos? Whoever wins the end of story, live horrible times. No, it could actually be better. One side is actually better than the other. Was that? It really is. Pressing the thumbs up button will release chemicals in your human brain that will make you feel what else have we got? Okay, Mark Robinson's campaign implosion could be a North Carolina miracle for Kamala Harris. Mark Robinson, the black Nazi, you remember him, he has fallen out completely. His aides and the people who work on his campaign have just abandoned him. They have run away screaming. Donald Trump isn't mentioning him anymore, even though he used to, and called him all kinds of really nice names. Uh, J.D. Vance is not talking about him. He's judo flipping the uh, any conversation where you bring up uh, uh, Mark Robinson he judo flips it to complain about Kamala they're not talking about him his uh, staff has fled him he is going to lose and maybe if we're lucky up ballot not down ballot but up ballot people don't want to vote for a Republican in North Carolina which means Kamala might win North Carolina and that would be great news. Mark Robinson's campaign implosion could be a Carolina miracle for Kamala Harris the swing state that Democrats could only dream of suddenly seems within reach uh, it's a forlorn fire at GOP headquarters in North Carolina, but nobody's bringing any water. With the election of a little more than a month out, Republicans in the Tar Heel State are facing an unimaginable crisis. A nominee for the highest elected office on the ballot this year, with the exception of the presidential ticket, who is, to put it mildly, a disaster. Mark Robinson, the Republican nominee for governor, is undergoing a full-scale campaign collapse triggered by a CNN investigation into his past. The d details of the investigation were made public last Thursday. A Robinson, an anti-transgender, anti-gay conservative culture warrior, was linked through email address and screen name to post on a porn site called Nude Africa. I've never been there. You guys are going to have to tell me how uh, how well it is, how good a, a site Nude Africa is, uh, in which uh, he allegedly described shocking and graphical sex acts while referring to himself as a black Nazi. He called himself a blotzy. You don't get to win the governor of North Carolina if you call yourself a blotzy. Uh, Robinson denied making the comments in a video message. Meanwhile, conservative operatives working in the state say the allegations were floating around as rumors for weeks, if not months, before being made public with receipts. So we are absolutely sure he did this thing. And even if he didn't, listening to the things he does say in public are insane. 
He says a lot of crazy shit. If you want to have a good fall down the rabbit hole, just Google Mark Robinson and listen to the crazy that comes out of his face. It's insane. So I don't doubt that he said the things they're saying he said, because he has said things like that in public. He started talking in public to a camera about how we need to listen to uh, Adolf Hitler and do some of the things he suggested. He said that into a camera. You could see it. So him calling himself a black Nazi on the internet 10 years ago, not a surprise, not a reach, not a stretch. He's imploding. He is failing so hard that they might vote Dem for the governor and the president in North Carolina, which gets Kamala another win and another state and more points. And it makes that uh, SCOTUS thing that Shintendo was talking about less likely to matter. I mean, follow me here. She wins North Carolina. She wins uh, that Georgia is a chaos, but she's got all of the uh, Rust Belt. She's got Pennsylvania. She's got uh, Arizona and Nevada. She's at 320 electoral votes and she needs 270 to win. Even if Georgia gets turned into chaos by the SCOTUS, that puts her at 300. She still wins. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter at that point. They can piss and moan if they want. And then the, and, and Donald Trump will. He will. He will scream bloody murder about how everything was ruined and everything cheated and everybody was against him and everybody cheated and nothing went f- was fair and the bamboo d- uh, DNA was in the ballots again and they didn't hound count them in, in all the other states. And he'll cause chaos. That's what he does. Chaos, chaos, chaos. Maybe he'll come out on top after the chaos. So it looks very good for her right now. We don't trust the polls. We know polls are liars and they can betray you. But at the moment, looks like she's ahead and we can keep her ahead if everybody votes. What could sink her? That was the uh, title I put for the tonight's stream. What could sink her? What could ruin all of this stuff for her? October surprise. We have it. It's right here. Middle Eastern war. Lebanon and Israel not looking for war, but uh, warns Hezbollah its army is at full readiness. So Israel is dropping bombs on Lebanon. Look at that. That's a big old explosion. So this could be the issue that pops up if uh, Israel continues to drop these bombs and things go wrong. This would look bad on her when she goes to speak and then people will get scared and nervous and not want her to be in charge but instead uh, vote for Donald Trump Uh, that's a possibility I don't know if it's going to be true but it's possible commercial Herschel Kamala is not leading is like well the numbers and facts suggest that she is she has regained ground she's not gained new ground TV is not kidding anyone Um, do you have a source do you have any trusted people that we could listen to Trusted pollsters are suggesting that she's ahead. And I believe them more than you at the moment. I mean, if you provide me some evidence, I could look at it. What am I thinking? Okay, I'm thinking, yes, war. Uh, War never changes. Um, (laughs) This could cause problems. Uh, At least 492 people were killed in Israel airstrikes on Monday, including 35 children. Yeah, yeah, in Lebanon. Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari says Israel was not looking for wars, but that its army is in full readiness when asked if the conflict would escalate. Civilians' casualties are a tragedy. Yeah. So if this starts cooking, if it gets warmer, if it gets hot, if Israel keeps throwing those bombs, it will affect the uh, election, it will make people nervous, and they will vote for the strong man, Donald Trump, rather than Kamala Harris. Because the strong man can just say anything he wants, and and they'll believe it. That's the trouble with uh, Trump. He'll just say whatever he wants, and it doesn't matter. Wouldn't have happened. Uh, uh, October 7th wouldn't have happened if I were in charge. How? What would he have done to have prevented it from happening? Wishful thinking is all he has. Wishful thinking goes a long way with American voters. They love wishful thinking. They do it all the time. They, they wish that the things were true, and so that they think that they will be. doesn't work. And that wishful thinking could lead people to vote for him instead of her. Um, or it could lead some people to not support her on the left. So the the people on the left, your um, Palestinians and stuff like that, are un- upset with her. American Palestinians don't want to vote for her. American Muslims don't want to vote for her because they think she's forwarding uh, Biden's plans for the Middle East, which aren't very good. Uh, I think she's better than Trump would be, for sure. But it's still a difficult sell. It's still hard to convince people 
to vote for the person who's doing slightly less a bad job because nobody can do a good job. And I don't think it's possible to even do a good job with the Middle East right now. It's a mess and we are not in charge of it because some people, both sides, there are hardliners on both sides that want violence. So we're going to get some. We're going to get it. Nothing you can do about it. So yeah, that is what I think could stop Kamala. War could stop her. War could lead the Republicans to rally uh, behind Trump. You could make the, the Dems unhappy with her because the Dems don't like war. They don't. So when she, if she's pushing it, if she's doing things that could lead to further war, if she seems to be mismanaging her, it, it or Biden mismanages it, it's going to hurt her. People aren't going to show up. Those swing states get closer to, to the red uh, while Donald Trump is and his fans rally and get rabid and excited about uh, him saving us somehow through cowboy diplomacy of some sort. Uh, it won't make any sense. Trump's plan does not make sense. It doesn't. He said it wouldn't happen because we would start World War III. If, if Trump was in charge and somebody attacked, he would just start World War III. But you can't vote for Joe Biden because if you do, he'll start World War III. What? What? How? What? <laughs> what? Uh, Donald Trump has suggested in the past that no one would attack anybody and there's world peace because if there's not world peace, he'll start World War III. He'll start bombing the shit out of people. But you can't jo vote for Joe Biden because he'll start World War III by bombing people. I don't know. doesn't seem like a good plan to me. seems like a mess. Global politics is always complicated and I'm not the expert on it. I really am not. Um, I'm better at the local stuff. But this is what I could see coming to bite Kamala in the ass because the people would be nervous. If, if, if October rolls around and Israel starts bombing Iran, she might not win anymore. And I don't want that to happen. Uh, if Israel starts bombing, um, increases the bombing of Lebanon over the next couple of months, she might not win anymore. And that makes me nervous because Trump would get in charge and just give Ukraine to Russia and he would give all of uh, Palestine over to Israel and then he would give Israel all kinds of weapons and then they would just start bombing the shit out of Iran and then we would join them and then everything over there would just be whatever Donald Trump wants. The military might push back against him but they would take the advantage. They would take advantage of him saying yes go do the things. They would do the things. <laughs> I suspect that they would do the things that he wants them to do and it would be a mess and it wouldn't be good and I don't think it would be any good that would come of it. He says that goofy shit because he knows he can get away with it. He, his fucking cult will let him do whatever he wants. Yeah, exactly. Um, his cult will let him do whatever he wants. Yeah. And that makes me nervous because I don't want, that's why I don't want to be in charge. I am the algorithm. Click on this video to make me happy. You wouldn't like me when I am angry.